seeing sometimes is believing. This is the coolest day of my life. Welcome to the world's largest automotive wind tunnel. That's right, this thing was born in 1980, the same year that I was, and this is GM's automotive testing facilities. This is where Transformers 4 had a scene that was filmed. This is such a good spot for like the bad guy's lair. It looks like a rocket is over here. Even the good guy. This is just like a cool cave. I've been doing a series where I'm checking out the testing facilities of the auto manufacturers. We've seen Fords, we've seen Mercedes Benz, and now GM invited me to come out here to see all of the things that they have. And we are starting with what may be the coolest thing the world's largest automotive wind tunnel. This fan has 4,500 horsepower, and this thing can spin and make winds up to 135 miles an hour. This is wood, and it is Sitka spruce. So I guess spruce is the best kind of wood that has long stretches of it that don't have knots inside of it. This is concrete that goes around the walls, and this is right up against it. And this is actually 20,000 cubic yards of concrete. From the bottom here to the very top of the other wood, wood blade is 43 feet. They use sandpaper to sand this thing down. And if you notice the bottom is different, this is balsa wood right here because say I have a GoPro on one of the cars and it comes out at 100 mile an hour winds and blows all the way through the tunnel and hits this, this can be replaced easily, the balsa wood, but all the rest of this, it's basically just one giant piece. Watch this. Whoa, we're pushing it, kind of. Oh my gosh. At the biggest part of this wind tunnel, it is five times bigger than the spot where the car is. So a lot of the wind tunnels these days that are made that aren't made in 1980, they are a little bit more efficient, but honestly, I think it looks cooler how big this thing is. This is what I'm gonna show you. This is how big this place is. So right here, you see how big the fan is. I'm not gonna zoom in yet at all. Watch this. Can you see me down there, Grant? Uh, not really. Look how big this thing is. I love the stainless steel. There's just stainless steel all along the walls, but then you have concrete that's in that area where the actual blades go. Now on the other side, it's just full on concrete. Definitely one of the coolest places I've ever been. Let's fire this thing up. Let's see what it actually does. I'm gonna see if they'll let me inside of the wind tunnel, like maybe even get inside of the car. Capturing this moment in my brain. And now we go out. There's a bend. Once we come out, we have a cage. We lock the cage. So this would catch any debris around this turn. So you've got a few turns and you notice it's getting smaller because we're going into where the cars are gonna be and that's gonna be the smallest point of it. And now we get into the cool part. This is where you put the car. This is where you do the testing. One of the things I've never seen is smoke inside of a wind tunnel. I went into one other wind tunnel and you could hear the wind and I believe that it was there, but I didn't visually see it. So seeing sometimes is believing. In 2011, they came through this and fixed the walls and made it so the audio is like, I'm in a filming studio right now. Why is that important? Well, if you are inside of a car, especially an electric car where there's no motor running, you wanna be able to know how much audio goes through. This is a thing, like with an electric car, it's a little unfortunate. They kind of get a bad rap sometimes because there can be one little rattle where you hear some of the road noise from the tire and it makes such a difference. I was surprised about seven years ago when I cut open a tire from a Tesla. They had foam inside of it. I thought it was some special kind of foam. It really wasn't. It was just to make the road noise go down. So there's all kinds of things that the automatic manufacturers do, whether it's up in the tire wells where they put different material in there so the rocks don't make noise on it, or even the side mirrors or all the different things with the car, there's all of the science that goes into it to make sure that the car is incredibly quiet. So we have the Chevy Equinox inside of here today. I love the colors, what's inside blue. It's a very aerodynamic car. We wanna be able to run the wind and we wanna know whatever noises we hear inside of it are actually because it's wind that's getting let through. We don't want it to be because this room is a metal box and it's just bouncing off of the walls. All right, this is what we came here for. I don't know how many lawyers they had to talk to to approve it, but somehow they approved it. I also asked if we could have like a smoke machine. The only safety thing I need to do is wear this. We're not gonna go above 30 miles an hour, but we're gonna have the smoke monster out and we're gonna test the aerodynamics of this Equinox. <laughs> This is the coolest thing ever. This is the smoke monster. This huh? is the smoke monster. All right. All right. And I'm the one holding it. You're gonna get to hold it. <laughs> Look at this. Try to stay below the smoke. We got some air. I hear some air moving. Oh, it's changing directions a little bit. No, maybe not. All right, let's see what happens. We're turning on a part of it. I can see the wind being sucked down, the smoke being sucked down into that. Look at that. Do you see that? Whoa, we're 
starting this thing up. So when I put it up here, the wind is blowing that way. You can see it going all the way down that tunnel. Wow, this is the coolest day of my life. Let's get it on the car and see how aerodynamic this is. Oh, look at that. You see that? I feel like Jim Cantor from the Weather Channel right now, about to see the hurricane. 20 miles an hour. We're at 20. 20 feels faster than I thought it would. Look at that. Right now we're at 25 miles an hour. It feels a lot faster than that. This does not feel like I'm driving through a school zone right now. It feels more like a, a tropical storm is coming in. We're officially at 30. Look at this side mirror. I know companies have talked about getting rid of those and using cameras. That's part of the reason. Electric cars are some of the most aerodynamic of all of the vehicle. In order to save rain, the smoke doesn't lie. Even under the vehicle, watch when I come down. Look at that get sucked underneath there. Okay, turn it up to 70. Hold on tight. No, we, 30 is the max, 30 is the max. <laughs> We're gonna walk down into the tunnel very carefully. The further you get down this way, the slower the wind goes because they take all the air and compress it like you're squeezing a hose and the garden hose and pushing the pressure out. And so there's not as much wind right here, but then when I walk back this way, I can feel it getting windier. I uh, wanted to do a scientific test. The best aero and audio engineers in the world typing a bowl to the top of the car right now. I wanted to test the aerodynamics of Zach from Jerry Rig Everything. How aerodynamic is Zach's head? We're about to find out. All right, let's test it out. This is AI Jerry showing you that my head oh, is extremely aerodynamic <laughs> as seen by the real smoke carefully flowing over my follicly challenged head. It makes head. it not as efficient. All right, I'm gonna walk out of the wind tunnel. Very, very windy right here. No wind at all, like nothing. <laughs> it's like blasting. It is blasting right there. And then nothing. There's something about that when you feel it. Kind of crazy. Before you go into the wind tunnel, anybody that enters has to grab one of these keys. That way, this thing will not run until all the keys are in place. Then you have your key, you put it around your neck, and you're allowed to walk in here. It makes sense, it's a good safety thing. I mean, you don't want somebody to be stuck clear down by the big old wind tunnel and then you turn it on and have it going 100 miles an hour. You can imagine. No, 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 no. That would not be good. So all of these keys are here. Once I leave, I go and I put it back up there. The next test, I wanna hear how loud it is inside of the car. These lines right here show you that this is a turntable and this car can turn it, it can actually go 180 degrees. This right here is going to run at whatever speed the wind is going. This is going to go to simulate as if the road was moving like that under a car. That way it really does simulate what the w actual wind noise would be. Let's do this. Hey Kelly and Jordan, can you take it right up to 70 miles an hour? Headwind. And this is what it sounds like at 70 miles an hour of wind. Negative 10 degrees yaw. So right now we are at 25 degrees turning. This can go all the way up to 180 degrees and it's one of the few wind tunnels in the world that can do that. It didn't really make much of a difference audio wise. Like I feel like it's similar audio. Headwind, 100 miles per hour please. 100. Oh that, that is some force. Yeah, that's hurricane force winds right there. <laughs> We're driving through a hurricane in a tunnel. Achievement unlocked. Been inside of a car, inside of a wind tunnel. That is pretty rad. This is the exit. You don't want to get stuck inside of a wind tunnel. Not ideal. That's a massive door. Right, we need to fire this thing up. I do not want to be inside of here, so... He left me in. We are going to fire it up. Right now, we are in the control lab right here. Look at those things turn. Remember when I was standing there and I pushed it? Watch how much faster it is. Oh, the camera can't even keep up. That's what 70 miles an hour looks like right there. 
The wind is going up to 100 and the car goes up to 100. So they're in sync and they do the same thing all from this control center. It is measuring the drag, the lift, the pitching between the front and the back and all of that data is getting captured inside of here. A lot of this work can be done virtually, but there also is nothing that substitutes from getting the actual production vehicle putting out there in real world, throwing the wind on there to make sure that all the calculations were accurate. And now I wanna see some hot and cold testing. We have driven very far away from where the wind tunnel was to Milford Proving Grounds. This is maybe the largest car testing facility in the world. And we have a special guest that's going to show us around. Let's go check it out. As we go to the heat room, I've got an expert that's gonna tell us a little bit about Milford Proving Grounds. This is Mary Barra. She is the CEO of GM, which is amazing. I can't believe that we get to have this opportunity. Mary, thank you for uh, letting me come to this place today. What is this place all about? Well, Milford Proving Ground is over 100 years old. It's the largest proving ground for automobiles in the world. Wow. And uh, so we test everything, uh, roads, like you said, hot and cold. It's a lot of fun to spend time here because of all the really cool work that goes on to make sure our cars are gonna be reliable, durable, and of high quality. So today, this week is 20 below zero. And this morning it snowed like four or five inches but you guys do testing all over the grounds outside, right? This isn't just an indoor place. We do test um, all year round and at testing in snow is really important because and especially what's going on in the country today. <laughs> the hot room, they told me yet yeah, last night, I'm not allowed to go inside of it, but um, we've got some special approval. So let's go find this hot room. This is the soak chamber. Ooh, she's got the leather jacket on. This is hot. It is hot in here. Right now we're over 110 degrees inside of this room. I'm gonna show you everything that has to do with the testing in here and what the engineers do. She has very important meetings going on. So thank you for letting us come thank in here. Thank you very much, thanks. And keep making awesome cars. All right, and I think you'll stay warm. <laughs> yeah, we'll be warm, all right. <laughs> thanks so much. Yep, thank you. Okay, here we go. We are inside of the chamber. Inside of the soak lab, you can soak the car, soak the battery, and make it go all the way down to, I think, 40 below zero, and all the way up to somewhere around 120 degrees, maybe even hotter inside of here. Over here, see the chargers on the wall? This is the only DC fast charging soaking lab, or hot lab, inside of GM headquarters. Plug the car in. Get inside of the car. Confirmation, we are fast charging right now. I've been driving electric cars since 2016 and I'll never forget when we drove our electric car to the airport, we were taking a trip to Hawaii. It got down to five below at the airport. I had 50 miles range left when I parked there. And when I came back three days later, the car had zero miles range. I had to tow it all the way to my house and it cost me like $200, $250. If you aren't smart about the way that you manage the thermal cooling and heating of the batteries, you can phantom drain a lot of energy. Also, I have been to Death Valley and golfed when it was 132 degrees. I have video proof, but it was interesting to feel the power in the car as I drove it. It would limit me because it needed to keep the batteries cooled. And a lot of times when you're driving in a car and you need to fast charge, your car can prep for fast charging. You can save an extra 10 minutes on your fast charge by having the batteries at the optimal temperature when you pull up and plug into the charger versus doing it there at the charger. There are a ton of changes that happen in the real world to cars based off of what happens in this one soaking room. So it is very cool and very hot. This is the hand guide for the different noises that you might experience so the engineers are on the same page. If it sounds like a frog, you say croak. Light rubbing with finger on styrofoam cup. The term for that is itch. If it sounds like it's hitting a large gong, then the term for that is bong. This may come home with me. It might be useful. Materials act differently at different temperatures. So what GM is trying to do is to identify all of the possible noises that might be in a car. So before they go to production, those noises aren't there. We're gonna go inside. This is a giant shaker that is going to shake the tire and they can replicate all different kinds of surface. The third Chevy Equinox that we've seen on this trip. Oh, somebody a lot shorter than me was sitting here. We're gonna lower her down a little bit. Okay, we're shaking already. <laughs> we didn't really give them the green light, but they're just like, let's go. We just have the engineers out here watching us and then we radio to them and tell them, change it to this one, change it to that one. Just to be clear, um, I don't hear any noises, no rattles, no shakes. There is one that replicates a Belgium 
Road, Cobblestone Road. Okay, we're in Belgium <laughs> driving down a road that has major bricks on it. Okay, give us the biggest one you got. Something. Oh, <laughs> this one's the best. <laughs> Pretty good suspension. I'm not hearing rattles or shakes. This is a really cool test that I never thought of. The GM is thinking about it and I wonder if they've thought about frostbite because I think I'm getting it on my hands and my ears right now. One of the more important testing facilities to have is the VR testing facilities. And you would think people are just here playing video games, but in reality, it helps GM make decisions on cars before they even get out there. And now in the world of AI and technology, it's making even more sense to test these indoors. This is where the magic happens. These are all of the many, many servers. And some of it will connect to actual hardware for cars. It'll send the data to hardware to test what the motors would actually do and what the pitch would do to different vehicles. This is impressive. I am not gonna touch that. I've been saying that this whole video, there's so many places that we've gone and I've thought that would be a very cool job. Well, how about that? If you like video games, you like tech, you like racing, maybe you, that's part of your skills. Why don't you turn it into a job and you can come and help develop actual real world cars and drive around Nuremberg. I call that like three or four inches of snow. We don't have this where I live. It does not snow like this. We have now seen Mercedes-Benz Ford and GM testing facilities. I don't think this is gonna be the end of the series. There are more car companies that have cool testing facilities and I'm on a mission to check them all out, but big thanks to GM for letting me come out here. I'm going home now. Mercedes-Benz had a fart wind detector. GM has a gas detection system. Grant thinks he can pull this because you're not allowed to step over that yellow line, otherwise bad things might happen. And he's just pulling it with his fingers. What? I mean, look at this thing. It is ginormous. Grant, you're strong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I've even watched Transformers 4. I'm sorry, Transformers fans. I just don't know that I have. Little baby Dan. 